Hey guys, it's Stephanie and I'm here with part two of my May wrap up. So this is all the stuff I read in the second half of May. If you want to see what I read in the first half of May, I'll leave a link to that video down below. Okay, so first things first, I finally got around to reading The Likeness, which is the second book in the Dublin Murder Squad series. If you remember, I read In the Woods earlier this year and I really, really enjoyed it. I was really excited to read the likeness because a lot of people like it more than in the woods and they say it's their favorite in the series so i'm gonna say so yeah after hearing stuff like that i was gonna be pretty excited so the plot for the likeness is a little unbelievable you do have to kind of just go with it um i'm gonna really oversimplify it just for time since this is a wrap-up basically um in this novel we're following detective cassie maddox if you remember, she was um, Rob Bryan's partner in In the Woods, in like in the Dublin Murder Squad series, whoever is the protagonist in this novel, obviously not counting the first, but whoever is like the protagonist in the novel was a supporting character in the previous novel, so you're kind of aware of who they are. So in this case, she was the protagonist's partner, and in this novel, you know, it's about her. Um, and so this takes place after the events of In the Woods. She's no longer on Murder Squad. Um, she moved to domestic violence and she kind of gets called back to Murder Squad because of something kind of crazy. And again, I'm really gonna oversimplify this and say that they find a, a body of a girl, a dead body of a girl who looks exactly like Cassie. And so they find out where this girl lived and she lives in this huge house with a bunch of roommates. And so they come up with this crazy idea to tell the roommates that the girl pulled through and have Cassie go in undercover and pretend to be the girl and try to find out what happened to her. So yeah, I know that sounds like crazy. Um, so regardless of how crazy it sounds, it was really, really fun to read. I loved reading the parts where she was preparing to be this girl and she was watching all the footage like how she stood how she talked she was watching footage of her laughing trying to get her laughing right trying to mimic her accent i just i really loved it the scenes of course it was so tense it was very high stakes with her going back into the house with these people that knew her very well like it was always like edge of your seat like oh my gosh is she gonna slip up i did not enjoy it as much as in the woods it's definitely up there like i really enjoyed it i ended up giving it i gave it five stars but it's really like 4.5. So now that I've read that, I do own Faithful Place. I'm like planning to my bookshelf. I've like packed most of my books up, but um, I own Faithful Place. So I'll be getting to that soon now that I've read the likeness and I can continue on with the series. Um, the next book that I read this month was Bellwether Rhapsody by Kate Reculia. I have no idea if I'm saying that right, but I really, really enjoyed this. This was a very fun read. Like I know I just said the likeness was fun, but that was like suspenseful fun. And this was like comedic fun. Um, so the Bellwether Rhapsody opens up at the Bellwether Hotel in Clinton's Kill, New York in 1982. When Minnie Graves was a small child, she was a bridesmaid in her sister's wedding. And after the wedding, she is trying to find the way back to her room and she gets lost. And she happens to walk by room 712 where the door is open and she is the sole witness to a very gruesome murder-suicide. The book then fast forwards 15 years to 1997 at the Bellwether Hotel where they are hosting the statewide music festival for gifted students. Then we start following um, certain chaperones and certain students competing. One of the girls, Alice, and her roommate, who is the daughter of the woman running the show, she's a child prodigy, um, they are drinking some smuggled wine and playing with tarot cards and she is giving her like a, Alice is giving the girl a reading. She starts pulling out some pretty grim cards for her roommate. She's trying to play it off. Eventually she does pull a death card and she is trying to calm her roommate down and say like it just means there's gonna be like a big change in your life. Like nothing like that. After they spill the wine she leaves the room to go get some ice and she comes back to find her roommate hanging from the ceiling by an orange extension cord. She runs to go tell someone what happened and when she comes back the body is gone and in her place there is a note that says now she is mine dot dot dot. And of course they were in room 712. I really really enjoyed this novel. I thought it was really funny. I know that sounds strange to say after I just told you what the premise is but this has a lot of dark humor. It's very light. I'm gonna say if you're a fan of Ryan Murphy uh, he's the guy that does Glee, American Horror Story, and Scream Queens. This is very much like his kind of humor. I would say if you liked Scream Queens, 
you would like this. So there's a lot of added layers to this. Obviously everyone is freaking out about the body of this girl. People are doubting whether it happened, toppled with the show must go on kind of mentality. You know, we're following around, like I said, certain people. And one of these certain people is Minnie Graves, the girl who was the original witness to the murder-suicide. She obviously, after being traumatized by the things she saw 15 years ago, has had a lot to deal with. And the only coping mechanism she has is watching horror movies. Um, and she's really trying to move on with her life. So she decides in horror movie fashion that the horror heroine of every franchise must come back in the sequel to face the monster. So that's what she's decided to do. She decided to come back and finally face her fears. So of course she hears that on the 15th anniversary of the horrible thing that she witnessed that something else crazy has happened. So there's just a lot of layers to this book. I really liked it. The opening scene to the book is probably the most gruesome and it's a lot more, I'm gonna say it's a lot more humor. Like obviously a very dark humor, but a lot of humor. Like I said, I thought it was a very fun, light read. And the next book I read um, was Swamplandia by Karen Russell. I read this as a buddy read with Brittany over at Under the Radar Books. And I have talked about this on, in a few of my other videos, but this is about a 13 year old girl who was raised in Florida on an island off of Florida where her family ran a gator wrestling theme park. The book opens up with the death of her mother and the family kind of having to come to terms with the financial realization that they can't keep this park open anymore. So in the wake of this realization, her older brother, who is 17, goes to the mainland, to Florida, and gets a job at kind of a rival theme park called The World of Darkness. Her sister checks this book out from their library boat, which is a whole cool thing, about spirits and talking to the spiritual world, and she becomes very obsessed with Ouija boards and spirits, and she becomes obsessed that she is pursuing a romantic romantic relationship with one of these spirits and she leaves her a note that she has decided to run away with one of these spirits and get married and she's heading to the underworld to be this spirit's wife. So Ava goes after her younger sister to try to stop her from going into the underworld and marrying the spirit. I really really liked this book. I had mentioned in an earlier video that a lot of people their issue with this book was the ending and after finishing this book I definitely see where they're coming from. The ending was very abrupt. I liked the way that Brittany put it. She was saying like there's a lot of energy built up up to that point and then when you get to the ending it's like that energy like what's gonna happen to it. It had nowhere to go and I agree. I think it was a very dark coming of age story in the sense that it is a child being met with the realities of being an adult. I felt like a big part of it was that these kids were sheltered. Parents tend to shelter their children and not be fully honest with them and kind of paint this picture that everything is fine and everything is okay and as you get older you know the blinders get taken off and you become aware that things weren't always all right and okay and a lot of that was coming to terms with that. I loved that it was a dual narrative between um, Ava going to the underworld to find Ozzy and Kiwi going to the world of darkness to try to save the family park. I felt like there was a lot of parallels between the two. I thought that she did that wonderfully. I really loved her writing. It was very mystical, very eccentric and weird and I, I really liked it. I am looking forward to checking out um, her short stories that people say are amazing. So I gave this four out of five stars. So I took the star off for the ending but we'll be checking out more Karen Russell. And the last book I read this month was also a buddy read. This was with Maddie over at the Maddie Hatter and reread um, Marisha Pessel's night film. And we really, really, really enjoyed it. Of course, um, we both are really into horror movies. And this story is about a cult horror filmmaker named Stanislas Cordova. And his daughter seems to have committed suicide, but there is an investigative journalist who has some history with Cordova that has his suspicions. So he starts investigating um, what happened the last days that Ashley, his daughter, was alive. When you start the book, you start getting filled in on all the background information. So this takes place of exposition. You know some background about Cordova, you know the nature of his films and some of the terms that people use when they refer to him, like Cordovites. I thought this was really good. Some people, like I said, think that this whole thing is a little gimmicky and it would have been if the story wasn't great. I thought the story was great and having this added to it, it was just an extra fun layer that made it just a really immersive read. 
um, the writing, there was a scene that was just so intense that I was reading it and my cat jumped on my lap and I screamed. Like I audibly screamed because that scene was so intense that I was scared. Um, so that is definitely what I look for in horror novels. I really, really enjoyed this and I'm sad that there is no Stanislaus Cordo and that I can't go watch some of his films. This was something that was completely up my alley. Total five star read from me. So anyway guys, thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.